Chris, what is our fourth main topic today? This is from Paulo Silva. I just read a post online about the last episode of Moon Knight, and they revealed something that I completely missed when I watched the episode. The god Hathor's avatar, Yatzil, meets and talks with Mark, and she tells him about the history and connection between Hathor and Kashu. But Hathor has another name, uh, Skemet. Skemet is uh, mentioned by T'Challa in Civil War, and in the comics becomes a major enemy of Wakanda and Black Panther. Do you think Marvel just gave us a hint as a future Black Panther villain? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in. And I'm so glad you did, Paulo, because here's the thing. We just did Captain America Civil War for our most recent movie club. By the way, if you guys not watching movie club, go join in. We got already got, I think, eight episodes up, I think. John, yes. what's our next movie? Our next set of movies for movie club, we are doing the Lord of the Rings trilogy uh, three weeks in a row for that. So, guys, make sure you tune in for that. Uh, but, yeah, so we just did Infinity War. Sorry, Infinity War, Civil War. And I'm watching it again, and a line really stood out to me. The line was, as after T'Challa's father dies and Black Widow is there trying to console him, says, sorry for it. He says, in Wakanda, we, don't, we believe the death is a stepping off point where Bast and Sekhmet uh, let you run in open fields, right? Something like that. I remember, who, who is Sekhmet? I, who, I don't remember hearing that name before. So then I came across this article in Screen Rant that actually discussed this a little bit. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what could be at hand here? This comes just from the folks over the Screen Rant, wrote the following. Moon Knight introduced uh, Hathor as the goddess of love and music, but the Egyptian goddess has a much darker side. The dark side is what could end up turning the Egyptian deity into a future Avengers villain. In the comics, Hathor became bloodthirsty after her father, Amon-Ra, sent her to punish humanity. Her hunger for death transformed her into Sekhmet, and she later became known as the Lion Goddess, in a way sharing similarities with Thor Ragnarok villain Hela. Sekhmet eventually became an enemy of Wakanda and, more specifically, an enemy of Black Panther. In the comics, she even kidnapped Black Panther to attack the Avengers at one point. Thus, it's possible that Hathor slash Sekhmet could turn out to be a bigger Avengers threat in the future. I had never heard of this. I had no knowledge of this before. And so when I read that, I went and started researching a little bit. It's like, oh my gosh, that it has featured, Sekhmet has featured pretty prominently in a few things. I don't know that it's a coincidence that we suddenly, we have Moon Knight, and they specifically highlight uh, Hathor's avatar and get a bunch of background on Hathor and the relationship she has with Khonshu and all that kind of stuff. I don't think this is a coincidence at all. And so I looked at this and I thought, this is freaking fascinating. Like, I love this. And if you're asking me the question, look, a lot of these comic book movies and shows will have little fun Easter eggs that can be references to other things in the comics lore. It doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere with it. Like, at all, nine times out of ten, it doesn't. But if you're asking me if I think this one could, if this deity could actually come into play more prominently either down the road in the MCU in general or in Black Panther specifically, not necessarily the upcoming movie, but in general... I'm going to say, yeah, because they seem to take some time in here, Rob, to flesh it out a bit. You heard and read this. Uh, going back and reflecting now that we originally heard the name mentioned and dropped, of course, in Civil War. What do you think about this revelation? And, and do you think this is something that could become more important? Or is it just an interesting factoid to come and go and they're not really going to do anything with it? What do you think? Hey, guys, we want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, me undies. Now, look, if you're anything like me, when you run out of underwear, the first thing you do is you just run to the big store and buy the cheapest pack you can, or you jump online and buy a big bag of some cheap underwear. And as you know, as long as it's not uncomfortable, it's fine. And that's the way life was for me until I got my first package of me undies and I put on that first pair I got. And I was like, this is how good things can be when you got underwear that's not just not comfortable, but actual comfortable underwear and that's what me undies delivers and i will never go back 
The MeUndies membership is literally designed to make your life easier with free shipping and returns on every order, saving on virtually everything they make, exclusive sales, and early access to their newest stuff. There's kind of no reason not to join. New prints drop monthly, so there's always something new to see, but you can always skip delivery for the month or even cancel any time, no questions asked. And guys, right now, MeUndies has a great offer for my audience. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. And and for a limited time, if you sign up for their free to join Me Undies membership, you get 25% off your first membership item. So to get 25% off your first membership item or 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Campia. That's MeUndies.com slash Campia. Oh, I no, I think they're absolutely going to go do something with it because, you know, ancient Egypt is... Ancient Egypt plays a big role in the Marvel universe, uh, at least the comic universe. I mean, you've got Kang, you know, became a pharaoh, Ramatep, and then you have Apocalypse. Obviously, we saw Apocalypse in Age of Apocalypse, or in uh, the X-Men Apocalypse movie, you know, in ancient Egypt. And now we have the Egyptian gods who are now the pantheon of Egyptian gods. And by the way, some of them in this show have already been turned to stone. You know, not just Conchu, but it's going to be interesting to see how all of this plays. They're clearly building this up for something. And as you pointed out, John, Egypt is, of course, in Africa, where Wakanda is. So I don't know if if there's going to be some big conflagration that's happening in, in, in Wakanda with the Egyptian gods. But that could be definitely a B, B story or something or setting up a third Wakanda movie about this because why not? And you know, Marvel plans ahead. And they're they're not doing this. I mean, they've leaned heavily into this aspect of Moon Knight. And they didn't have to add the Egyptian gods. They didn't <laughs> they didn't have to go this direction with the Moon Knight character. They could have they could have held back on it a lot, but they've gone full bore into this. And there's a reason why. And it isn't just for the Moon Knight show. Chris, uh you read that story you hear yeah. about this number one have you heard of this backstory before because i personally had not clearly not i couldn't even say the name <laughs> do you think this is something that will either play a more important role either in moon knight itself or maybe even more importantly do you think this is something that could play a role in the black panther movies or wakanda forever moving forward what do you think i think it definitely could because you know feige he's always playing 3d chess he's not playing checkers He's thinking so many moves ahead. So I think that bodes well for this. I was still hung up on the Madripoor connection. Where right? I, was yeah. just, I was just linking this to Falcon and Winter Soldier. So this is even more exciting. I, I do have to admit that the Black Panther lore is probably some of my least knowledgeable area of the, the Marvel franchise. And so I'm really excited to dive deep and learn more about this and learn more about these gods and everything too because i've already been super interested in all the uh egyptology stuff because of moon knight that so has been really interesting it's been really cool so i'm excited to have another layer of that to to look at in my spare time this is why i'm not watching winning time i'm being a nerd and googling stuff about hieroglyphics and gods <laughs> <laughs> so really though let's let's ask this and put this out there so we're getting them in each episode we're getting new layers built up and again i did take notice that not only did they mention hathor but they took time in a scene to give a full backstory. This is, to me, that's... Uh, that's and a, a character. Yes, mm -hmm. with the, as a character. Yeah. To me, that's a flare shot in the air saying, you got to remember this because we're coming back to this. And I liked her. Yeah. Oh, I, I did too. I, I really liked that actress a lot. Mm -hmm. And well, I like the character too. So clearly the character's trying to help out Mark. She feels some empathy there. Whether they feel empathy for Khonshu or not, who knows? Yeah. But... Whether it comes back to play a more dominant role here with eventually Khonshu getting freed and released, whether or not Hathor, Hathor has something to do with that or not, whether it's going to be something in Black Panther, I don't know. We'll have to see. The question is for you guys, what do you think about this? Do you think this little pickup here in this article over on Screen Rant, do you think this is something that is just a really neat thing for people who know the comic book background on these characters? Or... Do you think it's actually planting the seeds of something they're going to revisit more fully either later in Moon Knight or maybe even in Black Panther later on? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.